Well, hello everybody. Welcome to typing assignment number 16, results. This is Jovian Cleve. Well, I was going through my office a few weeks ago and looking at all the clutter I have and one of the things I noticed is I have this rocket bank and I've had this since I was a kid. And uh, what's special about it for me is uh, I got it in the early 1960s when I was really young and it is a uh, Bank of New Mexico, Albuquerque. I don't think that bank is even around anymore, but it is a bank and it was sort of designed in the uh, kind of an Art Deco spaceship motif. But what it is, is a little bank uh, for coins. So you put a coin in this little holder here and then you pull the holder down and then you press the button and it shoots the coin up into the bank and it ends up in the base down here and then you uh, you can unlock the base later on and remove all the coins but anyway I've had this uh, bank since I was a kid and I was thinking hey uh, maybe some of you guys have artifacts like this that you've had for years and years decades maybe almost your whole life and maybe it might mean something to you to write a piece about it and that's what the assignment was this time was to write a piece about some artifact in your life and to make it uh, more appropriate you would include a photograph of the object itself uh, so that we can see it. It was a pretty good uh, participation this time. One of our members, John Maie from Ontario, sent me his piece uh, by post, a paper typed piece that was very special. You guys are welcome to do that as well as submitting your the images of your typewritten pieces online as we have been doing thus far. Sending it by mail is a special way of doing it also. Now before we get into the results of the slideshow and all that, uh, I want to mention several things. First of all, one of our participants this time, a new participant, had emailed me or had notified me via the YouTube comments about he has an AlphaSmart Neo could he send a file that he wrote on the AlphaSmart Neo? He sent a picture and he sent me a text file. The picture was such low resolution that you just can't even read it once you expand it out into the width of a, of a video screen here. So I ended up having to take the text file and making it into a uh, PDF file. So. AlphaSmart Neos are very typewriter-like, and I think, uh, so we're kind of treading on mission creep, which is uh, when your original intention was to drain the swamp, and now you're up to your and alligators. In other words, things change. I don't want to change the rules of this typing assignment too much. I do have an AlphaSmart myself. In fact, I wrote my piece, composed it using the AlphaSmart, but I retyped it on my Hermes Rocket. Rocket. Get it? So, if you want to use an Alpha Smart, here's the thing. You got to make a paper printout of your text file. And then you have to scan or photograph the paper printout as if it was typewritten. And you have to scan it and photograph it in a high enough resolution horizontally so when it's expanded out to a full size screen, we can read it 1080. 1080 pixels wide. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is one of our other uh, typewriter uh, blogosphere members, Ted Monk from Arizona, had suggested in a previous video that perhaps you guys should send a photograph of your typewriter. And I thought, hey, that's a great idea. You don't necessarily need to send me a photograph of your typewriter every typing assignment if you're using the same typewriter over and over again. But you guys might want to send me a good high quality uh, glamour shot of your typewriter. And I will try to include those in the slideshow as part of the presentation, okay? Well, with that being said, uh, let's get into the slideshow and then we'll talk about it.
Diane Mayer's artifact was a can of soda, but it's not just any can of soda. This was a very unique can, the kind of a can that was made in very small quantities by a local regional a bottler in, um, I believe, Wisconsin, New Richmond, Wisconsin, and it is a cherry blended soda, and on the can it says, I like worms and best worms you ever tasted, so I guess it's worm soda. Anyways, that was very funny. Uh, and Diane also went on to talk about how she had originally thought about using uh, her Nancy Drew book collection as a topic for this typing assignment, but I really like this. There are a lot of unusual small manufacturers of soda pop that have been around for a long time, and that, that's an interesting can, Diane. Thank you very much for sharing that. Okay, Steve Yenner is a newcomer, and welcome, Steve. He wrote his uh, piece on an Alpha Smart Neo. He sent me a photo of a printout from that file. Unfortunately, it was too low of resolution. I had to end up taking his text file and saving it as a PDF and using that image. But anyways, this is his personal artifact is real interesting. It's a book called Rocks and Fossils. I almost remember this book, but maybe I don't. But uh, anyways, it's a real interesting book on rock collection and fossils. It, you know, it's interesting when you have a book from your childhood, it means a lot to you. I have a few of those still laying around and they do mean a lot to me. I don't get a chance to read them very often, but just knowing I have them and they're there whenever I need to refer back to them. Uh, it's, it's there for me. Uh, there's also a kind of a comfort in knowing that you have artifacts like that from your childhood. Anyways, the book is really cool. There's 12 specimens in the book. It was an educational kind of book and uh, including pyrite and sh shark tooth and all that. So Anyways, it, it, the book is from 1993, he says, and uh, it's really cool. It is very cool when you have that kind of an object from your childhood. Very good. Uh, thank you very much, Steve, for sharing, and welcome to Typing Assignments. Local Albuquerque and Kevin Kittle's piece was written on a Sears Forecast 12 in 12-pitch 12 Elite number 66 typeface, and... Uh, You'll notice the stationery when you see it at the bottom there. It's the ABQ Typeout stationery. So his piece is a piece of typewriter art, and Kevin has a book full of typewriter art where you act, it has the instructions on how to type each line, how many spaces, how many characters on each line, etc., etc. So uh, his piece is a piece of typewriter art called Quail. I really love it, and I love the brown ink, Kevin. Very good. Thank you very much. Typewriter art. This is one of the things you can do on typing assignments. It doesn't have to be just words. Very cool. Thanks, Kevin. David Cornelli's piece was written on a 1976 Brother 44 typewriter, and it is about the C5 Galaxy massive cargo plane. And uh, so when he was a young man in 1970, June of 1970, he witnessed one of the first C5 Galaxies being delivered to the Air Force from the factory. And it's an interesting story that uh, David uh, writes here because when I was a young man in the late, very late 1960s, maybe 1970 itself, there was a C5 Galaxy that was being tested here in Albuquerque. I believe they were perhaps testing it on the uh, EMP trellis facility at Sandia Base, the Kirtland Air Force Base, as all military aircraft in the Cold War were hardened uh, for EMP effects of nuclear war. Anyways, I remember seeing this C-5 circling around Albuquerque doing touch and goes and landings and takeoffs and all this. And just as you describe it, David, the uh, the look of the airplane, it looks like it's flying too slow to be in the air. It's so massive. It's forward speed in relation to its size. It, it really does look like it doesn't belong up there. But it's a very cool story you write. You're later on uh, joining the Air Force and f the final part about being able to walk into the massive uh, cargo area of the aircraft by yourself and uh, that is a very cool story. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. 
David Randall typed his piece on a 1956 Olympia SM3, and it is about a, a Stanley hand drill. What's interesting about your story is I have my dad's Stanley hand drill, and I also got another one recently. I think the one my dad had had uh, plastic gears, but I found a more recent one with metal gears. Um, uh, the main gear is metal, but the other little smaller one was plastic. Anyways, I have two of them now. And it's really cool that you can store the bits in the wooden handle. But I know what you mean about using these hand drills. I've tried, of course, I'm like you. I have a lot of, you know, I have a power drill and all these power tools. But I like to take out this hand drill once in a while and see if I can use it just as a remembrance of the way things were before we had the convenience of modern power tools. Our fathers would use these with great effect because they were skilled at using hand tools. And uh, your story is very cool. I really appreciate how you shared the craftsmanship and skill of your father. Never made one mark on the kitchen table. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Thank you very much. Andrew Nichols' piece uh, was very fun, and it was written on a Hermes baby. Yes, and it is about a game, a video game, based on loosely based on the Star Wars saga. And this game was produced by a company called Grandstand, and uh, he describes how his uh, his original game he basically played it so much as a kid that he wore it out, so that years later he had to go find a a newer version or another one that he could. Uh, use in recognition of the one he used to have. But uh, I know what you mean about having these nostalgic memories coming back to you when you find artifacts from your childhood. I go to uh, through thrift stores and antique stores and I see things that remind me of things I had when I was a kid. It's not that we're, you know, grown men playing with toys, but it's more like we're bringing back those memories, I think, and that's what's so important about it, but I really appreciate that. I think the toy that I most remember from my childhood was Johnny Astro. Look up Johnny Astro if you get a chance. That was a fun game. Thanks a lot for sharing. That was cool. Michael Kitchen's piece was written on a 1954 Smith Corona Silent Super, and it is about a desk. And this desk started life, as far as he knows, at the Archdiocese of Detroit and uh, eventually made its way into his grandfather's hands and then down to himself. And he used the desk all through his growing up years in his room and now his grandsons have, his grandchildren have use of the desk in his basement. The uh, desk was painted white over the years, and I really liked the way you uh, personified the desk. You wrote your piece from the perspective of if the desk was conscious and could could think about itself and its lineage, its uh, history. But I really appreciate that. It's very interesting how if you have artifacts, family artifacts from uh, years ago, maybe handed down from one generation to the next, it's very cool to uh, think about all the things that those artifacts have seen and all the, the family history they've been witness to. <laughs> well, thank you, Michael, very much. I appreciate it. Paul Hopper's piece was written on a Brother Charger 11, and it's really fun. It's about when he was a kid back in the late 1980s and went to Disneyland in Southern California, and he acquired this little Pirates of the Caribbean souvenir pirate coin with a custom stamping of information, date information on the back. Um, I really I thought it was fun the way you described how Disneyland and Anaheim was then compared to it, how it is now. For instance, the California Adventure place wasn't there yet, and uh, the, uh, you know, and just the city of Anaheim was not as built up as much as it is, and all the uh, a lot of the rides that were back then are no longer there. And also, what really strikes me is how uh, parents were had no problem in letting their kids go off with their ticket books and ride their rides all day and by themselves. I don't know the way things are, at least in the United States these days, I don't see parents just letting their kids roam free and wild. You didn't even have a cell phone back then, you know? But uh, people think about security and things like that today. We didn't have that worry back then. Well, thanks a lot, Paul. It was great memories. I like your item. Diane Cox's piece is a wonderful piece typed on a Royal Quiet Deluxe 
Her photo is of a, this stately oak tree, this live oak tree planted 35 years ago. Boy, that thing is now, she says, 78 inches across and uh, still growing strong and all the protection and the stateliness that a, a mature tree delivers, especially an oak tree. I like your poem. It was really special. We need more poetry on this uh, project, and I really like what you did, Diane. And it reminds me that uh, how important trees are. We have uh, some three trees in our property that we've planted since we've been here, but they are not nearly as big and massive as an oak tree. Of course, our climate out here in the desert southwest isn't conducive to those kinds of trees growing very rapidly. But uh, I appreciate what you uh, wrote, Diane. Thank you very much. Eric Tidd's piece was really special. Welcome, Eric, to the typing assignments. And uh, your piece was typed in Olivetti Studio 44. His uh, piece is really about uh, having to go through his old family house after his mom passed away last November and coming across artifacts from his childhood that he thought were long lost. These two little matchbox cars. And it is indeed a strange feeling when those memories come flooding back. I know what you mean. Uh, a lot of things you don't even remember all of a sudden come back to you and you hold an artifact like that in your hands. I certainly remember Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels cars and uh, I remember setting up those tracks. I think it was Hot Wheels that had those orange plastic tracks and we would set them up from one end of Grandpa's house to the other or run them through from the entryway to the back door. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, there a lot of a lot of special memories. It's a sad time when a parent passes, but being able to go through your things and kind of rediscover the history, that is special. I'm glad you had that opportunity, Eric, and thank you for your participation. John Campbell's piece was written on a red 1930 Underwood portable typewriter, so his uh, artifact is a personal little brush. So when he was in uh, boot camp in Southern California in the Marines, uh, one of the uh, things that you had to do at times was uh, scrubbing an area with a toothbrush and he was handed this scrub brush by his drill instructor after having spent uh, time scrubbing over 1200 square feet with a toothbrush and this scrub brush became a very good friend of his over the years as he had his uh, career in the uh, Marine Corps as a helicopter mechanic and uh, used it very much. He says it's been with him since 1983 and still going strong. That's very cool. Uh, I was in the Navy in the late 70s and I don't think I had to scrub things with a toothbrush though. But I really loved your story. Very cool. And I like that you still have that brush since all the way back then. Thanks for sharing. And John Maye's piece was really special. Uh, he, of course, uh, typed it and sent it to me via the Postal Service. This item, this artifact, is a hockey trophy from his childhood. He confesses that he was not the best hockey player in his, of his peers, but nonetheless, at the end of the year, a hockey banquet when he thought he wasn't going to receive any trophy at all his entire team gets a trophy including him and he has that trophy to this day and that is very special sometimes the reward John is participating even if we aren't the best just hanging in there and doing it what a great great lesson there is thank you very much you might want to consider maybe just uh, putting uh, some uh, a few pennies down and buying a stamp and an envelope and mail me one of your pieces if you want to. That's that's kind of cool. Well, finally, my piece I uh, typed out late last night when I was waiting for a previous video to upload, and I wrote it on my AlphaSmart Neo, and then this morning typed it on my Hermes Rocket right here. But it's about this uh, Rocket Bank, and uh, my story is about the fictional character, Little Billy who grows up uh, as a very intelligent and uh, shy young man, fascinated with rocketry in space, and ends up getting connected into a mysterious government project. My wife read the story after I typed it, and she thought it had a sad ending. It should have had a happy ending, but sometimes the sad endings are better. Anyways, hope you guys like it. I really liked all your pieces, and uh, I will be 
uh, posting uh, the assignment for upcoming typing assignment 17 soon within the next week or so. Stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for everybody for your participation. I really enjoy this. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any suggestions for how we can improve things or do things differently, let me know in the comments or email them to me. Well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and have yourselves a great day.